Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. Now it's been quite a while since I've done one of these and this is a preview spotlight video and I'm going to be showing you what's coming up for the month of October. I've actually kind of missed the last few months. You know, Diamond went on hiatus so there were new new previews books and then I just kind of forgot about it. But then I came back this month and something strange had happened. Now we know that uh, Diamond is no longer distributing DC Comics, so there is no DC book this month. And then I started going through the website, and I can't find the Marvel book for this month. <laughs> so, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they switched to a pay format for the Marvel book as well, because you got to pay like a buck twenty-five at the store at your local LCS. Uh, but usually it was free online. You can just download it, and I only paid for the normal book. Uh, the one that you see right here. So you know what? To hell with both of them this month. We are going to spotlight indie books. Just indie, nothing else. I mean, Marvel has what? Like, I don't know, 30 titles coming out for October anyway. you got a bunch of Empire stuff. You have all of the uh, uh, Alex Ross timeless covers. And I'm actually, you know, doing air quotes there. Ooh, they're timeless. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for Marvel. So we're just going to completely skip DC and Marvel. And like I said, just to hell with them for the month. Um, DC, I will probably never cover again because, you know, I don't want to go looking for their stuff. I don't want to put that much investment into it. <laughs> I don't even like DC anyway. So, all right, let's get started. First up, we are jumping right into, well, actually, this actually got me. They're spotlighting the Marvel portion of the book as a spot. I don't even get this. I mean, really, buck 25, 120 pages, comics, why? Why? It used to be free. Like I said, not even going to worry about it anymore. So we are going to jump right into Image Comics. And the first book this month for Image Comics is Scumbag, issue number one. There is like a three or four page uh, sneak preview of this book. And I read through it and it actually sounded like a lot of fun. It's a new ongoing series. And we have The Scumbag, the story of Ernie Ray Clementine, a profane, illiterate, drug-addicted biker with a fifth-grade education. He's the only thing between us and total Armageddon, because this dummy accidentally received a power-imbuing serum, making him the world's most powerful super spy. <laughs> like I said, I read the first three pages. The artwork pulled me in. The dialogue, the story pulled me in as well. It was really, really good. I had a lot of fun with this, just reading this little snippet, and I wanted to keep going. I did not want it to end, so that was a really good sign for me. Next up, coming out in October, we have the relaunch of The Walking Dead. That is correct. We are getting a relaunch of Walking Dead in full color. Super excited for this because I've always wanted to read the Walking Dead books and never got a chance to because a lot of them are very cross, cross, cost prohibitive and you know trades are fine but I really wanted the book in my hand. Here we go. Every two weeks we are getting a new issue and they are redoing the entire series. We are getting a full 17 year run but we're getting it in, what are you, they're cutting it down to like eight years. So this is going to be great for a lot of people that want to jump on in. And uh, here we're getting a taste of what some of the colored pages are actually going to look like. This is going to be really, really well done. I'm very, very excited for this. Next up from Image Comics, we have Die, 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 issue number 14. Now, why am I spotlighting in issue number 14? Because President Obama has to fight for his life and the fate of planet Earth. If that doesn't scream by me, I don't know what does. And then... We're jumping over to Dark Horse Comics, and here we have Norse Mythology, issue number one. New York Times bestselling author Neil Gaiman breathes new life into ancient Norse stories by taking readers through the creation of the Nine Worlds to the epic origin adventures of Thor, Odin, and Loki to the end of life itself known as Ragnarok. Now, I've always been a huge fan of Norse mythology, uh, even before I, you know, I always knew there was a Thor and a Loki and Odin and all that kind of Marvel comics, but I never read them. But I became a huge fan of Norse mythology. Uh, actually, it was through Dungeons and Dragons. I got introduced to it through their gods and demigods books. So this is very exciting for me. Um, uh, Diamond is spotlighting this as a gem of the month. So they are actually, uh, you know, saying everybody should buy this as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Next up, 
Colonel Weir gets his origin story told here by Jeff Lemire, coming from uh, the Black Hammer series. Wacky space adventurer Colonel Randall Weir leaves Black Hammer Farm and embarks on a strange journey through space and time. If you're a fan of Black Hammer, you're going to have to jump on this book. It seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Another thing we have coming out for October, just in time, a Halloween one-shot of Stranger Things. Everybody knows the Stranger Things stories have been a lot of fun. They're well-written, and uh, they're just a blast to read. The show's a blast to watch. I think this is going to be amazing. Oh, and you don't got to jump in like midway since it is a one-shot. It's going to be all self-contained there for you. Next up, from Burger Books and Dark Horse Comics, we have the Seeds trade paperback. Now, I mentioned the Seeds several years back when it originally came out. I loved this story. It was so good. I believe it's so well written, and it fly it's really flying under the radar. So here's your chance to pick up the collected version of it in the entire series. Head one more time. Let's go here. Oh, coming from IDW, the crossover you never thought you wanted. And here it is. Transformers Back to the Future. They've been doing some amazing things at IDW. The last thing they just did was Transformers and My Little Pony. And wow, that book is insane skyrocketing. If you guys follow my Instagram page, you actually have seen the uh, San Diego variant of that book, 285 printed. It is going through the roof. That book is just bonkers. Anyway, here we have another one, Transformers Back to the Future. Marty McFly has just returned from the adventure of a lifetime to a new, better Hill Valley. Everything's looking up for him. That is until Marty and his friend Doc Brown's time machine attracts the attention of the Decepticons. <laughs> oh, now what could Megatron want with a time machine? Maybe he'll go back and find his Beast Wars self. Okay, next up from IDW, Dungeons and Dragons at the Spine of the World. Now, I really wanted to spotlight this book because growing up as a kid, Dungeons and Dragons was always a thing for me. Um, and I was just a huge geek, so I loved playing this. I loved hanging out with my friends, you know, in junior high school, and we all got together. And, and all the way clear through high school, doing midnight sessions of Dungeons and Dragons. And it seems like the Dungeons and Dragons popularity is starting to pick back up again. We're getting a lot of books and comic book series, so I'm really, really wanted to push this. All right, also coming out of IDW, this is going to be an amazing crossover. We have Lock and Key, which is amazing. We have Sandman, which is amazing. This is the zero issue that's going to introduce the crossover happening, so I think this is going to be a hot book to pick up as well. Scarant Hood number one. <laughs> I read this synopsis and I was like, okay, I need this book in my life. To-do list. Drop kids off at preschool. Grab coffee with other parents. Go ghost hunting in the woods. Fight demonic entity. Collect kids. Nap time. <laughs> with their kids away on a field trip, a group of parents disturbs an ancient evil. How many times have we seen this in the movie where the teenagers disturb the ancient evil and now we have the, the parents doing it? Uh, beneath the old church hall, unearthing a decades-old mystery about a missing child and inviting something hungry into their lives. That actually sounds like it is going to be an absolute fun read. And we have this great, I think this is the variant cover of it. Man, I just love that. Then from IDW, we also have Godzilla, History's Greatest Monsters. Now this is a uh, this was a 13-issue miniseries that is now compiled into one trade paperback 30 bucks totally worth picking up if you're a fan of Godzilla which like 90% of the earth's population is and then coming we're skipping ahead to Dynamite Comics Dynamite Comics has been putting out some amazing variant covers and books as of late here is Die Namite issue number one you like that play on words there we got about a bajillion variant covers coming out for this. As you can see, we have this Perillo cover starting it off. In hell, an evil emerges on 1930s Earth and nefarious danger threatens the globe in the dead of space. Vampirella is desperate to uncover a dark mystery. Now, this is going to be their, their universe crossover event that's going to encompass most of their characters from Dynamite Comics. I'm hoping to see some uh, of the Chaos characters also pop up. I'm a huge fan of Chaos, so... And we got some of these beautiful 
beautiful variant covers, especially as Peach Momoko's down here on the end. Anybody who's been following Peach Momoko lately has known she is just insanely hot. Everything she has touched has been just turning to absolute gold, going bonkers on the secondary market. It doesn't hurt that a lot of these things are very, very small print runs as well. And we get some, oh, and they're also doing this uh, whole series of Batman homage covers uh, throughout the course of every book over the month as well. And this is going to be the one for this book. Here we have some black and white variants coming out. I believe a lot of these are already bring, being pre-sold all over the place, like on eBay. and yeah. But you can order them direct from Diamond as well. Just go and ask your local retailer. Let's see what else we got here. Almost lost my spot. All right. And then speaking of Peach Momoko, there she is again, issue number 15 of Vampirella. Now this is a trade dress cover. Uh, there is a virgin variant as well down here. They have it listed at 50 bucks. Um, it's kind of surprising because a lot of these virgin variants have been retailer exclusives recently uh, from Dynamite. And they, like I said, they've been fetching serious cash on the secondary market. But it looks like Dynamite wants to put out their own for issue number 15. So maybe we'll see a slowdown of some of the retailer variants as the actual uh, uh, printing houses do their own. I wanted to show this as well because, you know, wearing masks is a big thing right now. You know, because there's this whole pandemic thing going on out in the world. <laughs> and here Dynamite's putting out their own series of neck gaiters. These are 25 bucks a pop. They will be available in October from finer comic book stores near you. So we have some Vampirella going on here, and I believe that's a Terry Dodson. Yep. We have some old school Red Sonia artwork going on. And we got Purgatory, and my favorite, we got an Evil Ernie. And we got some Joe Linsner, Betty Page. I love that Evil Ernie. I mean, look at that. That is insane. I love that. <laughs> okay, let's jump forward. Avengers of Vampirella, number 11. I wanted to spotlight these beautiful Ben Oliver variant covers. We have the cover B trade uh, cover, and then we have the Virgin variant, which will be $50 retail. So worth it. Man, those are gorgeous. Coming out of Boom Studios, we have Dune, House of Trades, issue number one of 12. So this is bringing us a prequel to the groundbreaking Dune series uh, for the first time. Perfect for longtime fans and new readers alike. Now, Dune is really getting a huge push because we have a remake of the movie coming out. Uh, Funcom has a video game coming out in a few years when it's supposed to be releasing alongside the new movie. So, I'm a huge Dune fan. I've loved every incarnation of this thing. It has been a blast. So, I'm really, really excited to see this. All right. What else do we got from Boom? Oh, they're showing off some of the character designs. Look at Duke Leto there. Hey. This is just showing us some of the character designs and some of the backgrounds and the pages, you know, before the, the uh, dialogue is put in, but absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. I have to backtrack here. We have issue number 55 of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now I have a feeling this book is going to be key because it is the final issue, but it is also creating... It's the shocking first appearance of a character no Power Rangers fan ever expected. So I'm actually kind of excited to see that. This beautiful foil cover variant as well. The White Ranger holding the Green Ranger helmet, which is shattered. You know, I'm a huge Power Ranger fan. When you were, you know, a teenager in the 90s, you kind of can't help but being a Power Ranger fan, so... All right, what else do we got here? Oh, here we go. From Action Lab, this is straight up from my buddy Squatch. We have Sasquatch in Love, issue number one, $3.99 price tag. Now, I read the synopsis, and it actually sounds rather hilarious. Meet Holden. He's a well-read, caring, and single. He's also the world's last Sasquatch. When Holden falls for Grace, the filmmaker who's come to rural Oregon to make a Bigfoot documentary, he enlists the aid of his best friend, local veterinarian Felix, to find out more about her. <laughs> I mean, it actually sounds like it's going to be a lot of just little stupid fun, so I think I might grab that. 
All right, now jumping into Aftershock. We have a lot of great books coming up from Aftershock. Uh, first here we have We Live, issue number one. The year is 2084 and the world has changed, wracked by calamities and crawling with monsters. The last remaining humans face a dangerous existence. And now the Earth has been sent a message from the deepest reaches of space, a dark countdown to the extinction of all humanity. But there's hope. 5,000 children will be rescued by these mysterious message senders. I love apocalyptic kind of storylines like this. It's just bleak and have no hope, but they usually end up being a lot of fun, full of heart. Next up, we have Sympathy for No Devils, issue number one coming out of Aftershock Comics. Winston Wallace is the last human living in a world populated by demons, monsters, and enormous creatures known as Colossals, who all picked up where humanity left off. Lying, stealing, cheating, and killing. So we're here we have a world that mimics the Earth world that we know today, but it's populated by monsters who are just going about their lives living like humans. Whew. All right, what do we got next here? From the pages of Sabrina, we have Madam Satan one shot. <laughs> now, I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I got to tell you, the Netflix show is absolutely amazing. The uh, comic book series has been a lot of fun, so I'm really looking forward to this. Like I said, it is a one shot, so no harm in picking it up and just checking out some of the Sabrina world. You might be surprised. Coming out of Aspen Comics, we have Michael Turner Marvel Variants. Now is your chance to stock your shelves. So, we got some Darth Maul variants coming out. Man, I mean, when are they going to stop milking Michael Turner? Um, but seriously, a lot of people are going to grab these because they are gorgeous covers. Um, I believe most of these have been seen already, though. These are, well, they're, they were supposed to be convention exclusive variants. So, we have this Darth Maul cover that is... Uh, 1999. We got the set with the sketch variant for 40 bucks, and we have Spider-Man 2 issue number one, also $19 for the regular, 40 bucks for the set, and then we've got some Weapon X issue number one, 20 bucks for the single, 40 bucks for the double, $60 for the three pack. Now, a lot of these Michael Turner variants that they've been re-releasing here at Aspen have been kind of uh, blowing up on the secondary markets. They might be worth a look at. Okay, Avatar Press. Avatar Press says they are skipping quarter four completely. They are just not putting out any books, but they're working on killer stuff for the beginning of quarter one 2020, apparently. They are not the only company to do this this uh, year. It looks like... Uh, Xenoscope was also doing it, and maybe some, maybe it wasn't Xenoscope. I don't know. I'll find out. All right. Next up, Spotlight on Necromorphous, issue number one. And we are coming from Behemoth Comics, and they are bringing this awesome story. Introducing Douglas, a teenager who gains the form and memories of any deceased person by touching any of their mortal remains. But everything has his price. After gaining this gift, he can only feel pleasure or emotion by being someone else. Not to mention he's forever stuck in his 16-year-old body, unable to grow old. That actually sounds like a really, really good read. Diamond actually gives it a spotlight because they are expecting it to be great as well. So, um, you know, I love indie books. So anything that actually sounds like it's going to be a fun read because I'm an avid reader as well, well I'll pick it up. Okay, what do we got here next? First comics, we have the Love Town trade paperback. Now, everybody who follows my channel knows I'm a huge fan of Love Town. I absolutely love this series. I own the original cover artwork to issue number two. So, uh, you know, when I say this is a great read, you must absolutely take my word for it. It's a great book. This trade paperback encompasses the first five issues. So, uh, and I think the UN Twins are working on a new issue. So we have a new story arc coming as well. This would be a great way to catch up. All right. Coming out of Mad Cave, I believe. Is that what we're doing here? Yes, Mad Cave Studio. We have two books I wanted to show. First, we have Hollywood Trash. 
Ah, uh, Hollywood, famous for celebs, sun, and murder cults. <laughs> the Privy Council is the most exclusive club in town, headed by the entertainment industry's top mogul, a ruthless executive who enlists his famous underlings to kill the people who stole from him. Two local garbage men. James and Billy must survive one epic day of sword fights, forest fires, and giant mech. At least there's hazard pay. That just sounds like a blast. It's issue number one. It's going to be a five-issue mini. I am looking forward to that. Over on the other side of this page here, we have Villainous number one. Tilly, one of the newest superpower people to join the Coalition of Heroes, is doing her best to navigate the dizzying world of superheroes. Working with her idol should be a dream come true. But when she learns the truth, Tilly's dream quickly becomes a nightmare. Now Tilly has to make a choice. Get in line and stand with her heroes or take a stand and risk becoming something more villainous. That actually sounds like it's going to be very, very cool. All right. Next on our list, we have The Vein, issue number one from Oni Press. Now, Oni Press always puts out great stories, so I'm always excited for this. Chicago, 1941, a blood bank is held up in a robbery, but no cash is taken, only blood. It's the latest in a string of similar crimes, and FBI agent Felix Franklin is certain it's part of a wider plot. But the truth is so much more sinister than he can imagine. The four robbers, who call themselves The Vane, are vampires, immortal, physically powerful, and after decades of honing their skills, practically untraceable. I love that that sounds like such a fun fun idea you know it's a different twist you have you know heist story with vampires all right next up we have red five comics spotlight on butcher queen planet of the dead issue number one when a young boy discovers a never before seen life form sid and her team of misfits must unravel its connection to a series of global attacks from another dimension <laughs> All right, let's see. What else do we got here? Also coming out of Red 5 slash Stonebot Studios. Legacy of Mandrake the Magician. Here we have a new spin on the whole Mandrake series. So we have a new take on a classic comic strip, Mandrake the Magician, in an all-new comic book series. Mandy Paz is, by all appearances, an ordinary teenager just trying to make her way through high school. If she seems like she's going out of her way to avoid attention, that's because she's hiding a big secret. She has powerful, magical talent. Now, Mandrake was always kind of fun to read in the comic strips, so this should actually be a blast as well. Okay, what else do we got here? I don't want to show Clifford. It's Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> All right, coming out of Scout Comics, we have Concrete Jungle, issue number one. When a rogue telepath begins hijacking unsuspecting minds and bodies to commit vicious crimes, crooked detective Annie Brunson is charged with cracking the case with her new straight-laced telepathic partner, Faith Jones. I love sci-fi twisted stories like that. They're always so much fun. Next up, a spotlight on The Electric Black Presents, issue number one. So, Black Caravan imprint from the dark world of the Electric Black comes a series focusing on some of its more sinister residents. Come inside, dear reader, for two chilling tales of cosmic horror, madness, and wartime revenge. Hosted by the Electric Black's proprietor, Julius Black. So, the Electric Black has been just huge popular. It burst onto the scene here. Everybody's like, oh my god, Electric Black! So, I have a feeling this spinoff is going to be just as much fun and probably just as much in demand. Hey, we only got a few books left here. This uh, Usually, this video runs about, I don't know, 40 minutes to an hour. Looks like we're going to hit about the half hour mark without DC and Marvel. Next up from Black Caravan, we have the Phantom Star Killer issue number one. Hey, Luke Star Killer, remember that? So anyway, Black Caravan imprint for uncounted millennia, the crypto crystalline stone remained lost to the blackness of space, hidden amongst the stars as time passed. The galaxy slipped into greater peril. Thousands of systems fell and worlds crumbled. Dark and ominous beings conspire from the shadows to possess its unlimited power and the ability to resurrect a legion of deathless warriors. So it sounds like we have a cosmic sci-fi with sort of a, I don't know, occult magic twist to it. So everything that I really enjoy reading about. 
I said only two more pages here. The first one's up from Vault Comics, issue number one, The Devil's Red Bride. And we got two awesome, gorgeous variant, or regular cover and a variant cover here. Man, those are beautiful, especially that second one there. 16th century Japan, the fates of warlords ebb and flow like tides of blood. None more than the Aragami clan, who follow their lord clad in the red devil mask into every battle. When Lord Aragami succumbs to illness, illness, his daughter Katsuko resolves to save her people. Years later, as she wanders the battlefield of her ruined homeland, Katsuko discovers a chance to avenge the terrible wrong done to her clan, even if it means stepping back into a road steeped in slaughter. And last but not least, I wanted to show Giga, issue number one from Vault Comics. It's a new series. Diamond is featuring it because they have a feeling it's going to be big as well. Nobody knows why the skyscraper-clad sized mechs known as Giga fought their bitter centuries-long war. All they know is that when the fighting finally stopped, the dormant Giga become humanity's new habitat and new gods all in one. When disgraced engineer Evan Calhoun finds an apparently murdered Giga, his society and the fantastic tech-centered religious order that controls it are rapidly thrown into chaos. Anything that has giant robots in it, I will read. I absolutely love giant robos. All right, so that's uh, everything for the month of October uh, 2020. Everything that I suggest you go out and buy. So, you know, make sure you had your pen and pencils ready and paper and stuff and took down notes people this is going to be all the good stuff so anyway i want to say thank you everybody for watching this this is absolutely uh it's so much fun for me to do i actually have a good time i love talking so as you can probably notice so to all my current viewers thank you so much i love you to death make sure if you're new to the channel hit the little cv down in the corner and a little bell icon up on top and we uh I want to give a huge shout out. You guys are awesome. Wow, man, my patrons are amazing. Right now, your names are just shooting up the screen with a huge thank you. And uh, like always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get back to doing this on a monthly basis. So take it easy.